Welcome to City Cinematheque, where the art and the pleasure of the movies are the subject of serious discussion. I'm your host, Jerry Carlson, and I teach film studies at the City College of the City University of New York. Today, as part of our tribute to the distribution house Zeitgeist Films, we're screening Volker Schlondorf's 2014 production, Diplomacy. Now, this is based upon a play, and it has really centrally two characters, and it's set in one night in Paris, August 1944, and the debate is, will Paris be blown up or not? Now, of course, we know it was not, but the how, that process, makes this an intriguing chamber piece. We'll be talking about that and much more, including the image of Paris in cinema after today's screening. Joining us will be noted film historian Marceline Bloch, no less than the editor of World Film Locations, Paris. So now, enjoy this trip to Paris in Volker Schlondorf's Diplomacy. Welcome back to City Cinematheque. Well, Paris made it. It's still there, thank goodness. It's a compelling film um, with many twists, many, many interesting aspects, and also as something that's transposed from the theater. It's interesting on all those grounds as well. And I'm very happy to have with us today, uh, returning to City Cinematheque, Marceline uh, Block. She is a film historian. Uh, she's a noted uh, expertise in French uh, cinema, recently published a monograph on Michel Gondry, recently published a, uh, a concise dictionary of French, of French filmmakers, and, hmm, I think pretty important for us. She's also the um, editor and author of World Film Locations Paris. So she's thought a great deal about Paris and the movies. Welcome back to City Cinema Tech, Marceline. Well, thank you so much for having me, Jerry. I'm so grateful to you and truly honored to be here again. Well, it's always a pleasure having somebody, somebody who knows as much about this stuff as, um, as, as you do. Oh, you so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's just start with the historical setup um, in this film. Uh, the Allies have landed. They are marching towards, towards, uh, to towards Paris. So um, what's the setup in this film? And I think it's worth mentioning that this is not the first film to deal with this. Absolutely. Exactly as you describe it, this is kind of the final days of the Nazi uh, stranglehold on Paris, on uh, on France, and uh, instead of retreating, there's this order that's given to destroy Paris, and this is essentially what the heart of the film is about. Will, will Paris be destroyed as Hitler is commanding, as Paris had really been the crown jewel of Hitler's uh, empire, um, shall we say, and... and um, annexing Paris, occupying Paris, uh, was this tremendous feat and uh, seeing, uh, you know, rather than, uh, so, so the destruction of Paris is really the, the aim here for, uh, for the Nazis, for the Nazi army, destroying Paris, um, leaving a, wa a wake of destruction, uh, whereas Paris is really on the brink of, of liberation, as you right. said, by, uh, by the Allied uh, forces, so uh, leaving destruction in, in the wake of the Nazi uh, occupation uh, of Paris, and really the question is, will, will Paris be destroyed? Will uh, the general go through with, uh, with uh, von Schuschlitz go through with this uh, order to, to destroy Paris uh, and how uh, through diplomatic uh, means, diplomatic interventions, this, this can be prevented on the, on the part of, of Nordling. Um, and, and we should point out that while certain aspects of this, the situation is absolutely concrete, and um, it, these are two historical characters, um, but there is invention involved, you, you know, in, in involved here. But nonetheless, this question, this open question of, and, and as the legendary phrase goes, is, is Paris burning? is presumably, I think, as, as the legend goes, the, the, the question that was being posed by Hitler, because that's what he really wanted. Absolutely. And uh, the pressure that is on the German general, if he does not obey this order to destroy, to burn Paris, to burn it to the ground, raise it to the ground, his own family will be uh, annihilated. So he, he's really in this um, situation, really an impossible situation. Does he save his family or does he save Paris? And this is uh, really at the, the heart of the film, whether he's going to be seen as uh, it, 
you know, in the annals of history, is he going to be seen as the savior of Paris, which is ultimately how, how he's known in, in, let's say, the history books or how he went down in history as the savior of Paris or as, the, as, its, um, as its destroyer. As, and uh, this is really the, the, the film's question uh, and how, how to prevent Paris from, from this destruction that is, is foreseen for it. And uh, this is uh, really about what the film um, well, and, and what, what you know, since initially he says, you know, I am a soldier and I take orders. I do, I do what I am, uh, I, I am told. So this becomes, uh, for lack of a better phrase, this becomes a cat and mouse Absolutely. game as to, uh, on, on the part of, of Nordling, Raoul Nordling, uh, of what particular argument can be used to, to move him, um, to, to get him onto, uh, onto this uh, other side. And I'm glad you brought up this question of, uh, of historical memory because the, um, the film does mention those things and it becomes part of their debate, but it's also not, it's mentioned, it's, uh, it's given there that there are things that the general would not wish to be remembered for, for example, the liquidation of the Jewish population, um, uh, you know, in one of his postings on the, the uh, on the Easter, uh, on the on the eastern uh, on the eastern front. So this is, as he himself says, this is an ideal posting because he's 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 not only the person that that Hitler believes will will take the order, but it's a place where perhaps he can end the war. Mm -hmm. and laundry, as it were, his own, his own record uh, in that way. Absolutely, and um, I, th I think you bring up just a wonderful point because uh, he, he says he never even questioned an order. He never right. even questioned an order, so he always carries out his orders and he never even questions it. So this is, uh, again, how, to, uh, how can you convince somebody who is so, uh, obey uh, so obedient, always carries out the orders, never questions them, and uh, really has really just arrived recently within a, a couple of weeks, Absolutely. a matter of weeks, and just uh, so that this is in, in a new uh, circumstance, uh, along with this new law that was enacted apparently just uh, prior to his arrival uh, in, in Paris uh, with the uh, ultimate uh, objective that he is to destroy Paris or his own family will be destroyed. And this is a new law that was enacted or uh, as he uh, speaks about in the, in the right. film that w this was just enacted purposefully to prevent him from uh, so that he could save his uh, so that he could save his family by carrying par carrying out his orders and that if he didn't carry out his orders his family would uh, would be destroyed this is a it's a very interesting portrait of this moment because of course as one imagines, the play does not have exterior sequences in it. We'll come back to what those exterior sequences are in just a second, but the film really sets up yes. this tension so. between the luxury yes. of the Hotel Maurice um, and, and the way in which the, uh, the Germans have implanted in themselves in the most luxurious and, you know, world famous mm -hmm. Uh, you know, sites of the Epicurean, you know, life, and clearly uh, this, 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 this general um, knows that life and knows how to enjoy that life. We have when eventually the, 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 the good Bordeaux comes, exactly. he can taste it, um, he will know the difference between a, a, a properly ripe camembert and, um, you know, and, 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 and not. So what do you, what do you make of, of, of the, the hotel setting in, in the film? Absolutely, that's such a wonderful question and it's such an iconic location, a filming location. It's really such an iconic Parisian location and showing the luxury of the hotel, the history of the hotel, uh, the, the fact that this was where uh, so many historical actors in the history of Paris and the history of Europe um, uh, stayed, including the, the story about uh, Miss Howard, the mistress of... Right. <laughs> Napoleon III. Exactly, and uh, the, the, the knowledge that Nordling has about the back staircase uh, that was used for, uh, for the purposes of uh, uh, spiriting the, the mistress in and out of the hotel, and the, or uh, pardon me, the, um, 
her lover right. uh, in and out of the hotel and the fact that there are uh, two-way mirrors so he knows which uh, so he, he is able to kind of uh, spy uh, as it were on the general uh, himself and uh, just the knowledge of the history of the hotel the importance of the hotel and the history of Paris the culture of Paris uh, the wonderful cuisine the wonderful uh, staff that is shown serving uh, uh, you know as much as um, uh, showing the, the serving uh, the, the the German occupiers and the residents of the hotel, uh, the woman at the start who will not evacuate because she has to do her eye makeup, and so this uh, this this uh, incredible um, moment I think in the film that really stands out, and uh, I think it really harks back to a certain extent to to Coco Chanel. Uh, okay, I, I really saw a kind of. Um, uh, just uh, who is staying in this hotel, the, the guests, the high-ranking members uh, of, of the elite society, the, uh, the, the collaborators, the, um, the, 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 the Nazi uh, generals and their um, acolytes. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a very, uh, it, the film itself has a strong sense of interiority within these. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, go with that. Yeah, that, that no, uh, I was just thinking about what well, we were thinking about the same, the, the same thing, because there's, you know, it is both touristic in the sense that this is an historic hotel, etc. Et, et but they've, they've taken it over, they're there, and you can see how in even just a couple of weeks, you know, he says, I am a stranger at that. But at the same time, he has an enormous acquaintance and admiration for French culture. He, f he, 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 falls, he falls into it. And he can have that life of luxury, even with the chaos around him. And then the film sets up, I would say, two other kinds of space. That, that literally just outside, there is a battle for the streets going on. To go across the street is to be in the danger of a, of, of a sniper. And then you've already hinted at, at this. There's the way in which there's another and a mysterious Paris that's the deeper history yes. Paris. And the entrance of Nordling, I mean, even the Genesis, where did you come from? But he just kind of appears, and it's a very, um, a absolutely, just his, his sudden appearance is very, um, uh, it, it sort of uh, reveals him as somewhat of a trickster character, yeah. uh, slipping between different, uh, as he is trying to convince the general, uh, using so many different tactics and angles. Um, and the, the general feels very, um, well, well, where did you come from? How did you get here? And the mention of the, 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 the hidden staircase, the general immediately thinks, well, there are assassins in the staircase that are going to come and, and kill me, and there must be hidden uh, soldiers uh, around, and the kind of um, uh, fear of, of the general that this ho the history historical aspect of this hotel will be the, the knowledge that... Right. A Nordling has will be uh, how it will be weaponized against him ultimately. Well, no, a absolutely, and and what what one of the things about the structure of the piece is that we begin to you know it, the seed is set of his mysterious appearance. Exactly. So, and I think you're absolutely right that we think hmm, this is a trickster of some kind. Then it, then you must say part of his initial strategy is to normalize this. No, I'm not a trickster. No, I'm just, I'm just a humble diplomat doing civilization's uh, business here. And then more and more of the tricksterism, you know, show up. And you've already mentioned that the fact that very late, he says, well, you know so many things about this. Mm -hmm. And then he mentions, well, it is a double two-way mirror, mirror. Did, you know, almost that, didn't you ever, you know, suspect that? Didn't you, you know, it's kind of like he can be almost, he, he never goes far because he is the diplomat. You never suspected something <laughs> like, like that? Or another detail, since we're mentioning, mentioning those, when the, 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 the servant is so solicitous and we, he comes with, you know, to sort the, the, the fine wine, the, 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 the cheese, etc. And then at the end, we see that one of the first things the servant has gotten is a camel cigarette, which would be from the American Americans. troops. Absolutely. And that, and, and, and Schlondorf uses that cinematic detail, which is not a theatrical detail. I mean, if it was theater, you'd have to say, hi, thanks, GI, for giving me this. But no, he just comes out smoking, and we have the shot of him looking, and now he has the Americans. He said, oh, 
he's been in it all along. <laughs> all, uh, you know, all, uh, all, all along. So, uh, you know, let's talk just a little bit more about how the, the film, you know, treats Paris. Uh, and, and what the, as it were, what the film thinks of Paris. Mm -hmm. And how does that fit in with, you know, how, you know, how, because you've thought a great deal about how other, fil how filmmakers use Paris. Oh, well, that's a wonderful question. I mean, Paris is just the, the culture, the iconic, uh, the importance of saving Paris as a, as, as the, uh, the crown jewel of uh, Europe, as the, the okay the importance of saving its monuments, its landmarks, which, uh, which are just um, uh, at the heart of this film. And to, to save Paris, what does it mean to save Paris? You, you, to, to save Paris is really to save almost civilization, to save culture, to save uh, history, to save, uh, it, it really plays such, a, such an important role in, in this film as Paris has played in, in so many films. Right. Paris being really, if we think about it, the birthplace, uh, really the birthplace of our notion of, of cinema, with uh, the Lumiere brothers in the the Grand Café, absolutely uh, in in the in late 1800s, 1895, which is still standing today. Which, by the way, is still um, uh, people can still go there today and see where where it sort of all began, a, 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 as it were, the notion of cinema as the place where you go as a group of people, you pay some money, you sit down, and as a group you watch something right. on the screen. And it's that, it's not the invention of the, right. of, the uh, of capturing motion, but it's the, as it were, the whole packet exactly. put together of what our experience has been for more uh, 125 years now of, of, of the cinema going right. uh, experience, and yes, I mean, in that sense, Paris is synonymous. It is the site of the birth of cinema, but it's also a, 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 a place that has been of infinite fascination to filmmakers themselves. Absolutely, and uh, as you said, just this notion of going to the movies, of p making plans to see a film, to go somewhere, buy tickets, sit in a cinema and view a film, this is really, this was really the, the, the invention uh, in, in Paris, the invention of, of cinema uh, as we know it in terms of cinema going, the idea of, of going to, to see a film, uh, and the, the notion of, um, uh, Paris itself as the uh, the most iconic film location for directors internationally, d directors from all over the world, and, and Schlondorf himself as a German-born um, director has made uh, many wonderful films set in France as Swan in Love, uh, uh, using Paris as, as a backdrop uh, for for uh, diplomacy, uh, just uh, is uh, v very much in line with Paris as sa saving Paris is almost kind of saving the concept of film or cinema. Well, uh, thank you. That's a that's a that's a great that's a great insight because of this way in which a little biography of Volker Schlondorf, which, which just to continue, build on what, what what you said, he was as a teenager sent to boarding school in 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 in, in France. And so he has this depth of understanding of French culture. He is, uh, I've had the pleasure of being in his presence a number, uh, a number of times, and he is a perfect trilingual. The, the joke, by the way, when somebody in the audience says, why do you speak, uh, why do you speak uh, English so well? And he said, well, when you're a child in the immediate post-war era in Germany and your neighborhood has 300,000 American troops in it, you pick up English. Uh, he said, all of my friends from elementary school and I, you know this. And then for him, p f f French is the third language, but one in which he is perfectly capable. He's, he is fully, fully, um, you know, capable in every aspect of the culture and the language. So he's, in many ways, uh, one can imagine that he is the ideal director. I think the accomplishment is in the film, but just sometimes you, you can draw biographical lines um, and sometimes it's not useful to draw them. In this case, I think it actually is useful because he is exactly a product of the post-war moment of the repairing of the German and French relationship. He is a multilingual artist who has, you know, worked um, you know, in France, he was an assistant to Anna René mm -hmm. on last year at Marien, Marien last year at Marienbad. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, this is a this is a perfect match of subject and director who knows who knows how to uh, to, to treat it. 
And in this respect, it feels very, it's an extremely personal, very Correct. personal undertaking uh, in terms of uh, the, the liberation of Paris, uh, as well as uh, portraying um, the invaders, the Nazis, the Germans, in terms of um, uh, for himself as a, as a personal project, as, as he was uh, born in, in that era, in Germany, uh, arriving in France in the 1950s and taking on this most personal for, for him. Absolutely. So this is also, you know, it's a chamber piece mm -hmm. about a mm -hmm. huge historical um, a, a, a event, and it has two, I, I, I will use a very American phrase, it's got two real pros, as it were, in those, in, in those roles. So who are, for, who are these actors and why are they the right actors for this? Oh, absolutely. I mean, Niels Arstrup, uh, in the role of the German general, is uh, an iconic French actor who is also incredibly versatile, uh, just uh, has built a, a, a real, a, an oeuvre, really a body of work that is just, uh, he, he often plays these kind of villainous, menacing uh, characters such as in, uh, and he, he has received a tremendous recognition for his, his role such as in uh, Un Prophète, uh, where again he's um, playing this um, gangster uh, boss, uh, as it were, in, in a prison uh, setting, and uh, he also played a very menacing uh, character of a, a doctor who has really evil um, intentions in uh, the, the, the French language Belgian film, um, Loving Without Reason, where he, um, he often portrays these uh, kind of menacing uh, characters, but uh, he, he, does, he approaches the roles without, um, uh, with such a versatility, he, he really um, uh, he really blends, melts in, into the into the character so much, and he shows a very multifaceted portrayal. I mean, again, as much as he is a general who doesn't ask questions, who always obeys orders, he he does the ultimate, uh, really disobey, uh, uh, disobeying in, in this film by not allowing for the um, not allowing for the destruction of right. Paris, and he really uh, over the course of the film, you can really see how uh, how his um, uh, his uh, stance really is changed, and all the the many different ways that Nordling, the, the the different angles that Nordling tries to pressure him with to not to destroy Paris, to save Paris, uh, and I, I think Niels Arstrup is just a just a, a phenomenal, very um, uh, just just perfect for this role, and just an icon of French cinema. Well, and and I, I want to also just underline that 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 his something you've already talked about, his physicality. Absolutely. So there's a way in Absolutely. which he can be as refined and restrained yes. as, as possible, Absolutely. but then the moment comes in the film in which, you know, Himmler's, you, you know, mm -hmm. gophers mm -hmm. come to, to, to essentially to ransack the, the Louvre, the for, Louvre the, for the art. For the, for the art Absolutely. and that, and of course he's, you know, Prussian army regular army and these are all the people he's had to put up with that have that, that have that have surrounded Hitler. Now this is not to make him, you know, he does an heroic act but this is not to make him a hero, no, you know, yeah. a, a, and that but we see the way in which he is disgusted Absolutely. by this but moment and and tears because he's been so delicate you know, with everything. I mean, the way he, you know, he holds something, the way he, he, he poses himself, and then all of a sudden you see the, the rage just with the sweep and the full use of his, uh, of, of his body. And he also uh, initially refuses any diplomat. I mean, he tears up the letter that right. the French general Leclerc, uh, uh, he, he tears up the letter that Nordling uh, offers to him at the, at the start of their sort of uh, encounter, their cat right. and mouse, um, pas de deux. Uh, exactly. Very, very yeah. much uh, there in So just kind of ripping the letter, sort of this almost um, uh, kind of a bull in a china shop sort of uh, uh, physicality, but, right, absolutely. Um, but uh, it belies a you know uh, his um, uh, approach, uh, his it, you know the uh, the ability to um, consider the many different uh, angles and positions rather than simply obeying his orders without without question, and certainly this mention of oh well we're going to take we're going to pillage or ransack uh, the Louvre before we destroy it we have to take the best pieces of art or, you know, we have a, a list of artworks to take and uh, certainly, again, plays into the Paris uh, as this, as the cultural capital, uh, as the, the, the culture, um, 
uh, capital of the world, essentially, and uh, the importance of Paris and the fact that even though uh, even though Hitler has ordered the destruction of Paris, it's uh, they still want to keep remnants right. of the Parisian of, of the culture, the Good art. Point. Uh, that uh, even if it's even if the city is destroyed, we are going to keep the paintings, the artworks, um, sort of the fi the finest pieces, the best pieces, uh, and uh, it, it really shows again the the extreme cultural importance uh, of of the city right. and uh, what would have happened. I mean, it's almost it is unimaginable to think what if Paris were destroyed, if it were flattened, as they mention how the German cities uh, had been razed to the ground and how. But if this were to happen to Paris. Um, uh, it, it's it is un, un, unimaginable. Well, thanks for thanks for bringing up the fact that he is capable. I mean, this becomes genuinely argumentation, Absolutely. you know, back back and forth. And you know, he's he repost with this. He he gives he gives what happened in Hamburg. And so I'm I can't. And he says I can't buy that argument. And he says, well, you know, I'm neutral. I'm 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 Swedish. And he says, well, you say that, but I never quite hear the same regret in your voice for our civilian victims as you you hear for her. So so, so within this chamber, as we as, as we as we've said, you know the the. <laughs> there are different poisons introduced um, I into it that n neither one at certain points wants to take on directly, but they, we know is just there waiting to be mentioned, and occasionally this stuff, you know, does does pop up. Oh, absolutely! Such as Nordling mentioning Nordling mentioning that his own wife uh, is Jewish, and the sort of the very personal um, how he was able to save. Uh, if he was able to save his wife, then he could save the the children, uh, the the general's um, uh, fat wife and children, and uh, how he has personal knowledge of uh, taking them to Switzerland, taking them to um, a neutral uh, a zone to to save them. Right, and and of course, one of the you know big reveals of the of, of the end of the film uh, is that. Uh, he had made the promise, he had made the promise, and there is no indication right. that he could exactly. actually execute the promise. Absolutely. But that becomes the answer to what would you do in my position? And the answer is, mm -hmm. I, would I, I will be the maximum trickster. I will do anything to get you to say operation canceled. Absolutely, anything to save Paris and you know, anything, he will say anything uh, will will try you know everything possible to to save Paris and the importance of saving Paris as a beacon of culture, uh, the the importance of of Paris just um, uh, doing doing anything to save it, saying anything really uh, re revealing um, uh, revealing so little but revealing exactly what is needed at exactly the the right uh, time uh, and really his master master diplomacy. Uh, is is yeah, really comes through uh, in the film and in the uh, really up until the last uh, minute when the general calls uh, you know refuses to calls off the the destruction uh, really holds us on the edge of our edge of our seats and uh, well and as a good filmmaker um, as they are revising the, the the script and they they open it out they do insert you know the narrative device of the ticking clock, yes. you know, that, that, that there's a, a kind of countdown until they really need, you know, uh, to, 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 to do this. And it's, you know, it, it's set up, uh, it, it of course, simplifies what the real case was, which was much more complicated and chaotic, but it sets it up, you know, as the communication from one rooftop to another, exactly. and then the essentially the, the French architect Killing yes, the, um, the, the 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 Nazi who was willing to go w willing to go, uh, th go through through with through with, through, through with it, Sorry. and then all of a sudden everybody sees that there's been trickery going on on the count of of uh, of, of of everyone here. Uh, also, uh, the use of the uh, footage of yeah. Warsaw at the beginning to see this is what it would be like. If a city is fully is fully destroyed by the, if, when they set out to destroy a city, alas, they know how to, they, they know how to they, they know how to do it. And then the insertion, uh, absolutely, and the insertion of documentary footage at the end of the film, uh, where you have the black and white uh, documentary footage of the liberation of Paris, of the street battles. 
Uh, it's, it's very powerful, and I think it really recalls for me, of course, um, René Clément is Paris uh, burning, right. uh, which is a very, although it is very, has many similar aspects, it's a, it's a very different treatment of this uh, similar time period, the liberation of Paris. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a film that I think pairs per, extremely well with, uh, with diplomacy. Oh. With, um, so let's underline uh, that. People can look for, look for this. Is René Clément's Is Paris Burning, a film made in the 19... Uh, in the 1960s, yes. which has, which has, uh, as it were, the wider lens on this exactly. about about following in in multiple storylines the multiple players involved in it. With, as I remember, I believe Orson Welles um, has a very significant yes. role. Alain Delon and uh, uh, yeah, absolutely, a kind of who's who. It's actually a who's who of international cinema at that moment, and it's part of the cycle of the 60s of 15 to 20 years out of Hollywood and French cinema, you know, um, memorializing um, World War World War II, you know, in, in films ranging from, you know, The Great Escape to Is Paris, to Is Paris Burning, The Battle of, uh, of Britain, a bit later on, a bridge, a bridge Too Far. And that's what makes this film so interesting is because it's, it's non-epic. Exactly. It wants to get us into the heads of these people and into the issues at stake. Um, absolutely, and, and, and as much as um, is Paris Burning is a, a, as you mentioned, an ensemble cast, a very, uh, a, a very um, ensemble cast, a who's who uh, of uh, marquee names, and uh, it very much also portrays Paris quite differently in the sense that you see a lot of aerial shots of the city, a lot of. Uh, really wide uh, aerial shots over the city, which are really quite different than how how it is portrayed in in diplomacy. So you see the the importance of Paris as well, um, and the ending of his Paris burning with sort of the God's eye view of the uh, of the city and uh, the the glory of Paris, uh, the glory of Paris as uh, eternal and um, unwavering. And it's it's really quite different than how it's how it's shown. Well, in and we're going just to just as powerful in, in uh, many ways. I Absolutely, and we're going to end with just reminding our viewers that we end in this film cruising under the bridges exactly. on the Seine as, as, as at that river level look at, uh, at Paris. And we're also going to have to now uh, leave Paris because we've come out of, of, of our time. If you would like more information about City Cinema Tech or what we're doing here, uh, at QETV as a, as a whole. Uh, there's a place to uh, do that with, and that is at our website. We're at www.tv.cuny.edu. If you go to our website, you'll be able to look at not only what we do on City Cinema Tech, but the very wide range of programming produced here at City University Television and produced by a number of our remarkable 25 different campuses of the university. So please uh, be sure to visit www.tv.cuny.edu. Marceline, this is a very rich um, conversation of a very, very rich film. It's always a pleasure having, having you since you I'm going to push it and say you are the author of a concise dictionary, but I would call your knowledge of French cinema to be actually encyclopedic, and that's a it's a it's a it's a very nice thing to uh, as as a programmer and host like myself to have a resource like you available for our show and to share with our our cinephilic spectators on on the show. Thanks again for being with us. Thank you. Great, and thank you for joining us here on City Cinematheque. And please come back in weeks to come as we continue our stroll through the archives of film history. It's bye for now.